Is everyone ready for this? With the help of Buildzoid, we have bypassed some of the limitations on Vega 56. 242% overpower from 50. That'll give us something like at least 340 watts, but we're going for 400 watts. Nearly 380 watts on this thing. I think we're gonna need better cooling at this point, and so enters the next edition of the GN Hybrid Mod. Before that, this coverage is brought to you by Cable Mod. Already well known for their work in custom sleeved power supply cables, Cable Mod is now venturing into liquid cooler tube sleeving with their new AIO sleeving kit, compatible with Corsair and NDXT as of now. Check the link in the description below for more information. Okay, let's get this thing started. So. You saw the new power target, 242% offset. We're gonna turn this into a liquid cooled mod now that it's 3.20 in the morning. That seems an appropriate time to be doing this. So the plan is put a big cooler on this thing. The biggest I have right now is the thermal take, whatever it's called, flow, the 360 millimeter cooler. So we're gonna put one of these on there and I'll probably replace the fans with some, some really, uh, really high, performing fans. So either the Noctua stuff or the Corsair maglevs. And we are also going to need this, which is a plate we made previously for the uh, Vega Frontier Edition cooler. And uh, this basically we just drilled holes where the mounting holes are for, uh, for Vega. And it's all the same with this one. So all we have to do theoretically is attach these things together. So I'm just gonna figure out where I want the tubes oriented first this time, unlike last time. Okay, all right, that secures our plate. Now we need the screws, which I forgot to get. Okay, I forget which packs we used last time. And I don't feel like checking. So I'm just gonna kind of guess and check here. I think we probably used these, seeing as there's a hole in the bag. All right, that looks promising. So how did we do this again? Did we go through the top? Yes. And then I taped off the backside. Yes, that's all correct. Okay, it is, it's coming back to me. Okay, so I think we did this last time. Did we do that? Yeah, we did that, right? Screws through the top. I'm just testing to see if it's gonna work right now because I don't really remember what we did for the Vega Frontier Edition mod. All right, this seems about right. Okay, all right, so here's what we're doing. We are going to be offsetting the power on this card 240%. I don't think it will actually do 240% offset, but I mean, it's just, it's basically gonna max us out. And before we were hitting a limit, either a current limit or a power limit, uh, we were bumping into 300 watts, couldn't go higher. And so I was told by Buildzoid we should be able to as long as we keep the VRM to 100C, which we can definitely do, and I'll put thermal couples on there to be sure, we should be able to do at least 360 watts through this thing. And I'm gonna push for more. And then hopefully that gives us more headroom to uh, get, I mean, just get more performance out of it. So right now I'm just testing the mounting. We're way off on one, we're way heavier on one side than the other. So we're gonna fix that. See if it mounts correctly. It's been a little while since we did this mod about a month now. And if it looks like I remember, we can forge ahead and put thermal paste on it. All right, so we're clearing the chokes at the top. We're clearing everything. We're making contact with the entire GP die and HPM. So let's take it all back off and put thermal paste on it. Okay, so while I'm doing this, let me walk you through what the goal is. We could not modify the, come on, come on, you bastard. We could not modify the uh, BIOS for this. All right, you know what, that's fine. And that's because of an AMD security and validation feature. It's just, it's just not going to let us. So we could flash BIOS, but we couldn't even rename it, much less do anything useful with it. AMD says this is to comply with a Microsoft Secure Boot protocol. As we're currently aware, that's not actually a necessary step, but we've asked them to clarify. And unfortunately, 
lock in BIOS like that means that you can't get the full power out of the card that it has. I mean, this VRM can handle it. The GPU can handle it. It can handle more power, that is, that it's doing. And AMD is artificially locked, Vega 56, we think, so that it won't outperform its own Vega 64. Because they would lose crazy money if that happened. So that's what we, that's, that's the little conspiracy theory. And this mod, if we can get the overclock higher, although scaling is a bit bad with Vega once you approach higher power, uh, this mod will hopefully help us determine if we can outperform Vega 64 with Vega 56. I'm just going to put a lot everywhere because whatever is unnecessary will squish out. And having too little in this case is going to be bad. All right, that should more than cover, I mean, that'll come out a bit. <laughs> That's fine, it's not conductive. We are installing a Power Play Tables mod. It's a registry edit, because we couldn't get the BIOS edits to work, thanks AMD. And I believe it was done by Helm on overclocking forums and Buildzoid. The Buildzoid helped out, Helm uh, set the foundation did Frontier Edition, and then we're kind of applying that knowledge to this card. This is hard to do with two hands. Okay, so now we just need all these to be about the same height so that we don't crack the die. I should check what we did last time, I don't remember. Hey, my mount screwed in. 7.21. Two one. 0.21? Okay. Oh. 7.21. All right. Shut up. Yes, that is correct. I'm going to say that's good, I think. Uh, yeah. Almost. Good. Uh, good. Okay, so bo bottom right. Okay, all right. I think we can call that. And then I'll thermal test it and see how it does. But we're making, uh, we're definitely making contact. And we're at the same offset as last time. And last time it cooled insanely well. So I think we're good. Yes, that is for sure contact. And it's for sure a good amount of mounting pressure. Astute viewers might notice that there is a connector missing here. That connector goes to the LEDs on the Radeon logo. I didn't like the LED, so it's gone. It's been removed. No, it does not affect performance. It's an LED power header. Okay, are we contacting anything here that we need to mask off? No. Uh, we've got probe points back here. This is HBM2 probe points right there. We're going to hit that with a DMM later. And then V-Core is up here somewhere. I've got it highlighted by Buildzoid. So we can do all the probe points and check things live while working on this, which means I'm going to leave the back plate off. Probably want to do that anyway. Next step, anything to cool on the back? All we have on the back is the voltage controller. So we just need to cool the VRM and keep it under 100C, which should be feasible. And I'm going to do that mostly with direct airflow fans because these are exposed copper anyway. So who cares? Uh, direct airflow fans should pretty much take care of us. But let's just go ahead and do it the old fashioned way, just to be sure. Okay, thermal adhesive. Use, try and use some that haven't been used before. Uh, there's part of our HBM2 VRM, one phase, single phase. Let's see, these are the same height. If I, yeah, I remember correctly. These are definitely the same height, so we do one for each pair. And then we're just going to blow air on whatever doesn't get covered, which there'll be one or two that don't get covered. But those are the ones we hooked up thermocouples to last time, and they did just fine. They were, were not complaining. Number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
Nine, ten. Okay, all right, cool. <laughs> Done. So that's what we got. I, I can't touch this at this point. It needs to dry. Some of those are better contacted than others, but I'll look through it and make sure they're all good and dried evenly on the surface of the fats before we get testing, but it needs to dry for a little bit first, probably overnight. There are two sets. Is it two now or just one? One, one, oh yeah, two sets. Two sets that are not hit by these uh, little heat sinks. Honestly, they're not really needed anyway it's just kind of a formality because we're pushing the power limit so much higher i went ahead with it and included the heat sinks the two that aren't covered are going to get plenty of airflow i mean like 2400 rpm times two of airflow on them they'll be fine so uh we'll have thermal couples and things to probe as necessary make sure everything's happy other than that i think we're pretty much ready to test so uh that's the hybrid mod for vega 56 this one will be a little bit more exciting than normally because we've also modded the power play tables. So we'll be able to see how much further we can push it. We also have an extra size up radiator. Normally we use a 120, this is a 360, which will definitely help as well. Uh, we're not really concerned about noise or power here. I just, I'm curious how far Vega 56 can go because if we bypass the AMD limitations, which we've kind of done indirectly with the registry mod, then uh, I, I want to see if it's a Vega 64. That's what I'm after, because I don't think the extra CUs, if you look back in time, they don't really do all that much, uh, at least compared to core clock. So if we can push this core clock even another, well, I, I'm not even gonna make predictions, but if we can push the core clock higher, it'll be only good things except for power consumption. This is not going to be an efficient mod. It's not something you should do. You would waste a lot of power. You're not gonna gain a ton out of it but it'll be fun so that's why that's why we're doing it but as always you can help us out directly with this type of project by supporting on patreon.com gamersnexus or grab a shirt like this one or our anniversary edition shirt at gamersnexus.squarespace.com check back soon for the results thank you for watching subscribe for more i'll see you all next time <laughs>